And with that, I want to uh, welcome uh, Peter Dunn, who's got a new title, but not new to the city of Worcester. He's the new assistant chief development officer. Peter, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, Peter, you've been involved uh, in, uh, in economic development with the city for a number of years, but a, a recent promotion, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, uh, your role in economic development, uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about that, and then specifically, we'll get into a new tool in the toolbox, uh, Opportunity Zones. Great, absolutely. So the division I oversee is uh, business and community development. So a lot of that focuses on the support systems for small business and entrepreneurship in the city, and then also some real estate development activities and some of the different tools and incentives that associate with real estate development. Yeah, you know, and sometimes that's overlooked. You know, there's certainly the big projects that are important, or, you know, whether it be some of the projects in, in the downtown, mm -hmm. you know, City Square, uh, <coughs> Gateway Park, but there are other projects around the city that are important too, whether it be the Southwestern Industrial Park and others. Right. But then there's this whole kind of small business component, and you've been the, the Worcester Resource Business Alliance, right? Yes, yes. So now there's a network in the city of over 20 organizations. Most people are familiar with it, the Chamber being one of those members, the Worcester Business Resource Alliance. We come together once a month to talk about trends in small business and maybe some gaps in terms of the assistance that the businesses are getting from our partners. And so we can help fill those gaps and then provide the best service as possible to our small business community. And it's about fully leveraging assets that the city has, yep. whether it be our, you know, our college students and trying to help uh, you know, facilitate the, uh, the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial spirit with them, but also you know, we are blessed to have a, a large immigrant community who come from entrepreneurial cultures and backgrounds and doing everything we can to support them as they start and grow businesses. Absolutely, and the Worcester Regional Research Bureau did a partnership with the Worcester Business Journal this year on kind of that immigrant experience, especially as it relates to entrepreneurship in the city, and you can see that uh, in terms of Worcester, the, the spirit of entrepreneurship with the immigrant community is very strong. Yeah, and vitally important to the future. But I mentioned Opportunity Zones. So uh, with the uh, Federal Tax Act, uh, this was a new tool to encourage a strategic investment in certain areas. Maybe you want to sure. share with our viewers about the, this sure. Opportunity Zone. So overall, we think it should be a good boost in terms of the return on investment for certain real estate projects. And there can be some components where it's investments in business as well for the city of Worcester, and not only for Worcester, but all of the communities that have this designation. And a lot of it is similar to how the new markets tax credits program work in terms of what census tracts are eligible. Um, so it should be noted that in Worcester, not all of the census tracts were eligible for this designation, but we did receive six, and it has to do with the demographics of those particular census tracts. So we think it should be a good boost for some of the different investments that would be happening in those areas. Uh, and then in addition, it's kind of the elements of it are sort of analogous to the 1031 tax-free exchange that's been around for a while. Um, so the primary benefit of the program is a capital gains tax shelter. So the 1031 exchange is if you sell a piece of property, you, you kind of want to avoid or mitigate mm -hmm. a taxable event. It's right. you, you're, you're, you, if you invest in another piece of property, right. um, you know, that, then you can kind of help mitigate that, that impact. Right. And then the opportunity zones is a similar thing where people can, if it's done right, avoid paying capital gains taxes all, 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 uh, at all. Right, and so that's definitely where the similarities lie is in the kind of capital gains tax liability shelter. And so in the 1031 that's been around for a while, that requires you to invest those proceeds into a like-kind asset. So it has to be something similar as mm -hmm. to what you sold. Um, so the opportunity zones are a little bit more flexible in that as long as you're investing in these geographic areas, it doesn't necessarily have to be a like-kind asset. And the city was involved in this process. Um, and, and the idea is to have people invest in the Opportunity Zone in areas that have traditionally lacked investment. Yes. Uh, and so the city was very active working with the state who then presented to the feds yes. to have these areas designated and there were six in the area and I believe right. about a dozen in Worcester, Central Mass and Southern Worcester County. Right. And lucky for us, I mean, we were definitely strategic <laughs> about trying to designate census tracts that have maybe different opportunities within them. Um, so for example, all of downtown is, has been designated, which is great. All of the canal district has been designated, which is important. Two census tracts in Maine South, uh, really important in terms of some of the housing that we might right. expect to be created there. And then on the industrial side of things, we've, we've also designated the census tract that encompasses Route 20. Uh, and over the last two years, the state and the city have invested $20 million in the infrastructure on Route 20 to hopefully support the types of industrial development we'd like to see there. And pretty basic infrastructure that yes. we have pretty much in every other part of the city, but water and sewer. Right. So now we want to encourage commercial industrial manufacturing uses in that area. Right. This is a opportunity zone as investors could potentially, uh, you know, build something, make some money on it, 
Absolutely. avoid capital gains now right. and then avoid it on the money they make if it's for a 10-year period. Right. So it is pretty <laughs> technical in terms of how the benefits um, are allocated to a particular project, but kind of at a high level, very basic, it's that the proceeds that you might have from a sale that are subject to that capital gains liability, you can see a step up in that basis. So instead of paying the capital gains on 100% of those proceeds, if you hold that new investment for a certain period of time, you can see a small step up in the basis. So that mitigates that liability. But then the big benefit is that any new gains on that new investment that's been made, if you hold it for 10 years or more, that's completely tax-free. Right. And, and candidly, you know, I think the, the, the verdict is still out on yep. whether this will be uh, worthwhile. I, I think we're still waiting on regs from the IRS or they come out? Some guidance, I think they're calling it. Um, I think that then maybe they get adopted in terms of becoming regulations, but there's some guidance that are coming out because there have been questions from not only the kind of accountant tax kind of community, but also just from the developer community yeah. as well. And, and I think people are cautiously optimistic that it'll be an important tool uh, that, that we can use to encourage that investment in that area. And in fact, right. you know, par part of this is arming people with the information. And yep. uh, you were kind enough to uh, participate in a panel that the, the chamber put on in January. Mm -hmm. We had 200 people show up at 7 a.m. Uh, for an hour and a half panel. And it, pretty much everyone stayed to kind of you were part of a, a team, a panel that unpacked this, answered yes. a whole bunch of questions so that uh, we can try to utilize this tool and, and make it so that it's something that's uh, beneficial. Absolutely. And I think the consensus among those that are kind of practicing in this area is that the benefits of the program isn't strong enough to maybe solve all of the economic challenges of a particular project, but it's certainly a positive lever. So if there is something that's almost there, this benefit might kind of tip it over the, right. over the tip the needle. And as we started the show with, as we, we come to a close momentarily, it's another tool in the toolbox on top of things that the city already utilizes. Right. Um, uh, uh, TIFs, tax increment financing, in right. some cases DIFs, yep. district, improvement, district improvement financing, HDIP, housing development, uh, uh, for uh, housing development for market rate, you know, so yes. and, and other things working for mass works infrastructure grants. So you have other things right. uh, uh, that you can hopefully use to encourage investment. And I think that that's important because um, where these these programs might get layered to help a particular project, including historic tax credits as well, that's where we really have the leverage to make sure that the project can be as good as it can be for the community. So for the Opportunity Zone specifically, there's no administrative approval requirement yeah. of the city or the city council. So a lot of this mechanism could be happening behind the scenes and they'd be getting this benefit without any really feedback or, or approval process. So if they are layering in some of these other programs that are administered either by the city or the state, uh, then there is a little bit more leverage in terms of making sure the project is as good, it could be, as, good right. as it can be. For and most responsible developers nonetheless right. are going to want to engage right. the community partner, right. not surprise people, and where they can work with, you know, hopefully local contractors and right. employ local people. So Absolutely. And chamber members. Yep, that's right. That's <laughs> Many right. of them. 